Hi, everyone. Hello. Would you like to make introductions? Hello. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? So this is uh, Stuart Q. Um, I'm the executive director of the Yale Center for Business and the Environment um, and a graduate of SOM and FES from 2011. Uh, we've got a great group of people um, from CBA and from the alumni community who are going to speak today. Uh, first, uh, you will see smiling um, in the corner of your screen, uh, Lauren Graham, um, who's going to be talking about the Yale Environmental Sustainability Summit um, a bit later. Uh, you've got Ben Soltoff uh, to my left here, uh, who just graduated um, from the Joint Degree Program and is leading our um, innovation work at CBEN between the um, Center for Business Environment and Sci City. We've got Todd Court, faculty director of the Yale Center for Business and the Environment um, and the head of the Yale Initiative on Sustainable Finance, and Heather Fitzgerald, associate director of the center, uh, who has set this wonderful webinar up today. Um, so um, we are going to be walking through um, a number of programs and opportunities um, and uh, just actually a sampling of the number of things that are going on um, in and around Yale. Uh, it continues to be a really exciting time. Um, one of the things that I think we're really enthusiastic about and has been transformative for our work is, you know, as you, as you hear, I'm talking about kind of Lauren and she's an alum leading, being involved in the Yale Environmental Sustainability Summit. You know, Ben recently graduated um, leading uh, one of our initiatives. Um, Vera Bork Meyer, who is going to join us, also a graduate of the School of Forestry, is leading our work on financing and deploying clean energy. Um, we've got Nikki Springer, a PhD from FES and an MBA from SOM, who's leading our work on renewable thermal. Um, and then this array of engagement with alums who are doing kind of um, um, anything from mentorship to research at the center to engagement in the online programs to a host of other things. So this really is a, a continued growth of how do we embed and engage alumni in all the work and activities um, at the center. So we're going to do about 30, a little over 30 minutes of conversation on some of the programs. Uh, we wanted to get you all up to speed on and then take Q&A. Um, so first, um, just as a little bit of uh, background, you see the, the sign behind us here. Um, our mission is to educate, inspire interdisciplinary leaders through business solutions to systemic environmental problems. Um, this plays out primarily in three main areas. Um, one, innovation and entrepreneurship. Ben's going to talk about that at length. Um, second, the kind of entrepreneurship and systems change. I think the YES conference and Lauren's work is a great representation of where that can be demonstrated at Yale. And then work on new models for markets and finance. Uh, and so we'll talk um, a bit about uh, the Financing and Deploying Clean Energy Online program, which fits um, really squarely in that area. And one cross-cutting theme through all the things that we do is where do we expand access to Yale through technology and learning like we're doing right now uh, on the webinar today. Um, uh, so, um, you know, this is kind of what drives our work um, and what we're, you know, aspiring uh, to do here. Um, and, you know, from the, you know, continued aspect of the joint degree program being the largest three-year program um, at Yale, with two master's degrees to these 76 new folks who joined the financing and deploying clean energy program to Todd leading um, and, you know, the EMBA program at the School of Management, which now has a track in sustainability to the increased a number of students that we hire across campus. So we have about 70 research assistants um, to the increasing number of alumni who are engaged and involved in activities here. Like this, in, this community continues to expand and grow um, and take different forms. Uh, and so we're really deeply appreciative of how all folks uh, have contributed to that. And we'll kind of talk about ways that those contributions can increase or be focused or engaged throughout the webinar. Um, so first, I want to turn it over to Lauren, um, who is the wonderful alum um, and the kind of most connected person at Yale through different alumni networks one could possibly imagine uh, who is taking the baton and leading the Yale Environmental Sustainability Summit in its third iteration this year. Thanks, Stu. So um, as uh, I was introduced, I'm Lauren Graham, FES class of 2013. I'm a graduate of the uh, MEM, Master of Environmental Management program. And uh, 
I would just say to start off with, I really appreciate everybody making time for the call today. And beyond uh, what I'm going to talk about with YES, the Yale Environmental Sustainability Summit, I'm happy to be a resource and a connector for anyone, whether you're a student or an alum who's interested in figuring out how to navigate environmental work from an alumni perspective. There are a lot of engagement opportunities through Yale Blue Green, which is the Environmental uh, and Sustainability Interest Group. And you don't have to be someone who even professionally works in the environmental space. We have alums from all the different classes, from the different graduate professional schools, Yale College, folks who are retired and are just looking for a second career or a, a shift towards environmental work. So we are really the home for everybody who is interested, regardless of their background. And I say that to start off with a conversation about Yale Blue Green, because some of the first people who helped to plant the seed for the idea of what became YES back in roughly end of 2013, early 2014, uh, were also engaged with Yale Blue Green. So I'm really excited to say that this is the third time that we're doing the conference, first in 2015 and then 2017. Uh, this year, the dates are Friday and Saturday, November 1st and 2nd, and the registration just opened yesterday. So we're already seeing the registration come in, and you can see on your screen uh, the registration link. There's early bird pricing available through September 8th, and then after that, it goes from 150 to 175. This year, we're offering the same rate for alums as we are for non alums. So if you have business partners, friends, anyone who you think would be really uh, interested in engaging in Yale's environmental community, they're also welcome to register. And if you uh, volunteer, because what's really special about YES is that it's an entirely alumni-driven network. And this is really a brand new model for Yale alumni engagement. Uh, there are plenty of amazing events and speakers that you can see on campus, but this is really the only event that is entirely conceived and executed and attended uh, through the alumni network. So volunteers are a big part of how we make this possible. And if you're interested in volunteering, you can uh, visit that link that you see under the volunteer box. And as a thank you, if you are volunteering and putting together one of the special sections, you have an opportunity to get a free pass to yes. So it's a win-win, help us build the conference and get a free pass. And if you're interested in supporting or donating, uh, basically either giving an individual donation to support the conference, or if your company or organization is interested in being a sponsor, you can email me directly. And any question that you have, you can also email me directly. So I just want to take a minute to just talk about what we're doing, what we're planning for the agenda since we are in the process of conferring speakers and we should be releasing the full information with the agenda within the next couple of weeks. Uh, the website that you see listed yes.yale.edu is where all that information will go. So to give a quick overview, so there are basically three parts to the conference. One is the kind of keynotes high and high level plenaries, the things that you're probably used to seeing at every conference. Then we have uh, special sessions which are still for the entire uh, body of folks who are attending, but really digging more into some hands-on issues. So we're going to have a great session on the 2020 presidential election and how we can refocus climate and some other environmental issues uh, with the new president, hopefully going forward, and uh, a conversation and debate about the Green New Deal. We have a great partnership with Sci City, that's the Center, Center for Innovative Thinking at Yale, uh, and there will be a pitch competition with students and recent alums who are putting together environmentally focused ventures. And we also are going to have a great TED Talk style decarbonization workshop and also uh, launching a brand new sustainable student uh, sorry environmental sustainability initiative fund uh, that's going to come out of Yale Blue Green. So that's uh, that's what's happening in the special sessions. And then in the concurrent sessions, which is especially where we need the volunteer support, we're really taking the feedback that we got from 2017 and creating more hands-on, uh, kind of in-depth workshops. So we still have some great panels and amazing alumni speakers, but really more opportunities for interactive work. Uh, that's one of the things that we really got from 2017. So talking about topics that are really top of mind. And, and that was the inspiration behind the theme this year of being dispatches from the future. The idea that we know and have received the dispatches. We know what uh, 2050 and 2100 might look like in terms of uh, 
the global recycling problem or the collapse of fisheries. Like we're getting the messages about what we need to do to build a more sustainable planet. So the whole theme that we're building around is how do we look into the future and then work backwards? How do we think about what we need to do today to build the future that we want? So really a balance of past and present and trying to lead with a really energetic and hopeful set of speakers and workshops to engage in. So uh, that's a lot of information to, to throw out, but I say please email me if you have any specific questions. Please volunteer and please register. So we're going to have a roughly around 350 attendees like we did last time to balance having a big enough group for you to really engage with your Yale community, but still small enough to be intimate and have those kinds of uh, networking conversations that are really the backbone of, of any event or any conference. So um, yeah, I, I think that covers just about everything. Stu, if there are any other questions or things that maybe folks have asked you that I can answer right now, I'm more than happy to do that. Well, one other way, Lauren, I, people have encouraged them to folks in the, their classes to reach out to a couple of close friends from their Yale network and encourage them to attend. Are you all trying to encourage the clusters of alums from different classes and years to draw in to then meet kind of other generations or schools? Um, and in particular, are there, are there schools um, or disciplines at Yale that you would love to see more people attending um, you know, the Environmental Sustainability Summit? Um, from uh, you know, a parts of campus outside of your college, FES or SOM. That, that's a great question. And just to, to reiterate, so this started as an original concept as a real business and environment kind of conference. So we get the strong representation from FES and SOM and of course Yale College. But what we're really trying to do is, is continue to push forward this idea of one Yale and a unified Yale. And from research through the Office of Sustainability, they have found that something like 97% of all of the faculty who are teaching across the whole university, regardless regardless of the school or discipline, has, is doing something related to environment and sustainability, which I think really proves the extent to which environment really is that organizing force. It really is that umbrella that captures everyone. So translating that same idea and that same sentiment over to alumni, we want alums from the School of Architecture and Medicine and Drama and Art to see the connections with the work that we're doing. And when the full agenda gets released in a couple of weeks, I'll hope that you can see some of those connections. So it's not just a conversation for the business minded or business interested. It really is looking at the broader social impact space that intersects directly with environment and thinking about how everyone can participate participate in this conversation. So that is definitely one of the other goals that we have for this year, to make sure that we are at least doing our due diligence and outreaching as much as we can to other parts of the university. And what I'll say is when it comes to any event, word of mouth is always really powerful. It matters to us whether you have attended a previous YES event or not, that you try to make the time to come if you are able, and that you share the registration link with others. We will have some sessions that are a live stream. So if you are from far away or can't make it to campus for whatever reason, you can still have some kind of engagement. And we're also looking for suggestions. I'm getting some from international alums, folks who say, no, I can't get on a, a transatlantic flight for a two-day event. How do I participate? So if you know that you're uh, far away or just not able to attend, but you're looking for ways to connect, please email me and I'll see what we can build into the conference to try to reach out to as many people as possible so that they can get some of the yes spirit great um yeah uh lauren we really appreciate um, you taking the time to talk about yesterday and um, you know we've deeply enjoyed the last two summits um and just for everybody kind of online you know lauren and her team have done a wonderful job of connecting and engaging with a wide variety of folks in and around yale so we're really looking forward to what this next one um is going to turn out looking like um, and Lauren has to hustle on to another engagement, so we're, you will see her did her box disappear um, in the corner, um, but she is still online, available, and ready to work with anybody who has the time, energy, um, and ability to help uh, build this next version of Yes. Thank you. I really appreciate that. So uh, looking forward to a flooded inbox, but uh, in the meantime, thank you, Stu, and thanks to the whole team for having me and letting me talk about Yes. Thanks, Lauren. Cool. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks. Take care. 
Um, so the next thing we want to talk about, this is a picture of Vera Gordmeyer. I'm going to talk about this. Uh, Vera's daughter um, has a high fever, so she had to skedaddle out of the office. Um, uh, we, um, this past year, uh, this has been a planning effort for three years on our side, um, launched a new program in financing and deploying clean energy. Uh, so uh, CBAY is one of the three um, uh, groups at Yale that has launched a graduate professional certificate. So this is a non-accredited degree program for working professionals. Um, and ours is in financing and deploying clean energy. Uh, it's a collaboration, obviously, between SOM and FES and drawing from faculty uh, all across campus. And so for those of you who have gone through some of the curriculum in and around Yale, this is really the culmination of a lot of work in building out a curriculum that is world-class uh, for students here on renewable energy project finance, energy policy, financing green technologies, um, technology transitions, and then bringing that all and putting it into um, um, a, a curriculum for these students. And, you know, we, we put this together with the idea that we have um, a strong demand. Uh, that is certainly proven to be true. We had almost 600 um, applications get started for the program in its first year. We just um, a bid adieu to the 76 participants uh, who are in the program. They did one week on campus uh, here at Yale. Um, and now they'll start the first, or they actually just started the first of four courses that they'll be going through throughout the year. Um, so one in uh, clean energy policy, another in technology transitions, a third in renewable energy project finance, and a fourth in innovation in finance, policy, and technology. Um, and, you know, this is a demonstration of a kind of a creativity, depth, and engagement of people within the Yale network. You've got alumni like Richard Kaufman and Daniel Gross um, teaching those core courses from the practitioner side. You've got tenured faculty or tenured track faculty like Dan Esty, uh, Narissima Rao, um, Ron Smith, uh, Michael Orstaglio, who were all in the program. Um, and practitioners like Rob Klee who come to campus uh, and who are now teaching um, at FES and also teaching in the clean energy policy course. So it's this kind of incredible collection of expertise um, that's been distilled and condensed into this year-long program. And we've got alumni actually from uh, Yale College, from SOM, from the law school, uh, from FES, who are all participating in this at different stages in their uh, career. And I mean, we, um, we had a remarkable week on campus. Uh, the energy and enthusiasm and kind of it is one of the most heterogeneous groups that we've ever seen that's all purpose driven and completely engaged on this goal. Um, it was fascinating because we did a group personality test on these folks and none of them had any negative emotionality. They were all kind of coming to a program that had a focus on financing and deploying clean energy and trying to tackle and overcome um, you know, this incredible challenge of uh, climate change. And all of them felt pragmatic and optimistic about it. And so our best thoughts and hopes for this program were really confirmed this week on campus of who we were attracted to it um, and how we hope they can go up and influence in the world. And this is really where you know, the kind of emphasis for the center is and where we hope it continues to grow is we are very tired of the old trope of waiting on the next generation of people to be able to address these issues. And there are people with five years to four years of experience in this program who are in their positions right now looking for content and education that can help them accelerate the deployment of clean energy. And so we're really enthusiastic about where these types of programs can be expand, can expand, can be targeted towards certain populations, um, and have an influence. You know, if we're if we need to scale up the amount of capital that we're deploying by an order of magnitude, then we need to train people and double the capacity that we also have, or you know, increase our capacity by an order of magnitude. So that's really where a huge focus and emphasis of the center is going to be going forward. And Vero, if you don't know her is a force of nature who's building this program and she's done a remarkable job of creating detailed learning objectives that are in six minute increments for an entire year um, of how one walks through it. So it really is a labor of love and pulls in a tremendous amount of expertise. Um, 
Another labor of love um, that we're going to talk about is Ben uh, Soltos, kind of deep engagement, innovation, and entrepreneurship at Yale, and his work over the course of the next year as our innovation fellow between CBA and Sci City. So I'm going to turn it over to Ben to chat about what his plans are. Yeah, uh, so I just started this role in July. Uh, in May, I graduated from the joint degree program between SLM and MBS. Uh, as an MBA and MEM, and I'm really excited to continue on at Yale in this role, working on entrepreneurship and innovation at CBay. This role is jointly split between CBay as well as the Sci Center for Innovative Thinking at Yale, City. Uh, I was heavily involved with the, both of these centers as a student. Uh, I'm really glad to be back working with them in this staff role. City is a, a relatively recent center. Some of you have been out a few years and may not have heard of them. They're kind of the current incarnation of the Yale Entrepreneurial Institute, but the approach is much wider than that. It's not just entrepreneurship, but innovation uh, across its different forms and across campus. And they really have this wonderful broad mission to bring together students from across Yale to solve uh, real world problems using ideas of innovative thinking. Uh, there's a kind of long history of Yale and CBA, at least CBA and City working together, uh, starting with Cass Walker Harvey, who was an environmental uh, innovator working here at CBA and also influential in starting City. Uh, my predecessor in this role, Sophie Janowski, uh, was also split between uh, CBA and City, and so now I'm working at that intersection. Um, but I'm not the only person who's working at the intersection between these two centers. Um, we also have Peter Boyd, who is a resident fellow, uh, who is influential in starting the Carbon War Room and the B Team. Uh, he also has a, a post at CBA and one at City. And Martin Weinstein, who is an open innovation fellow working on using new technologies to um, solve climate change, do carbon accounting, create smart contracts for energy. He's also jointly positioned between both centers. So Martine works on a project called Yale Open Lab. Uh, and then there's a number of other activities and print all of their logos and names right here. But a big one is, is Startup Yale uh, that, that from the beginning has, has been a joint effort of CBay, City, and other centers across campus. So speaking of those other centers, there is a growing cluster of innovation going on here at Yale. Uh, and you can see in this map some of the centers across campus that are working on that, not just CBA and City, but also the Yale Policy Lab. Uh, Dwight Hall that's been doing kind of social innovation and social justice for a long time. Program on Entrepreneurship at the School of Management. The Center for Collaborative Arts and Media kind of bringing a, a digital media approach to innovation. Things going on with healthcare, Innovative Health Yale and the Center for Biomedical Innovation and Technology. Uh, the Yale Landscape Lab, or the Office of Collaborative Research, there's, sorry, Cooperative Research, there's, there's stuff going on across campus and innovation, so it's a really exciting time. Uh, and all of this work you can now see on one website that brings together entrepreneurship across Yale. The simple li link is eship.yale.edu, and I also put a very innovative QR code if you want to just put your <laughs> phone up to the screen. You can check out that site. It looks beautiful, and it shows a lot of the initiatives and, and programs and centers that are working on entrepreneurship and innovation uh, across Yale. So uh, one thing that, that I'm planning to bring to the role and to both CBA and City this year is a focus on financing innovation. How do you bring capital and financial resources to make innovative ideas become a reality? There's a number of different avenues that, that I'll be working on that. One is an independent study on financing early stage climate innovation. This is gonna to lead to a report um, in the same kind of vein as the, the research that, that was done on B Corps a couple of years ago, a guide for investors on investing in early stage technologies to address climate change. That's, that's new technologies, new business models, startups, um, and that, that will lead to a report later this year. Uh, we already have at least one student on board for that. And it's a student who's a, a mid-career student who used to manage the climate portfolio at, at Equine Green. So I'm really excited about the potential for that research. Uh, there's also an independent study going on about scaling climate philanthropy. Kind of an example of that is the Beyond Coal campaign that started with a $25,000 planning grant is now this massive campaign, but there's not really a framework for scaling nonprofit efforts and how philanthropic organizations can do that. So we're gonna have some students do some research and, and create that framework. Both of these studies are gonna be advised by Namrita Kapoor, who is a um, board member of CBA, uh, an impact investor, uh, also has experience at, at EDF. So we're really excited to have her on board to advise both of these, um, both of these independent studies. 
Uh, we're also going to be running a city intensive. An intensive is a, a, a new format that's being tried out at city. Uh, it's a cohort based extracurricular learning experience. We're going to do their first ever finance based or finance focused uh, intensive and it's going to focus on how do you finance new ideas. It's going to bring together entrepreneurs and folks who have ideas that they want to get resources for as well as folks who are interested in finance or have worked in finance on the uh, investment side kind of talking together about how do you both assess the financial side of things and also the impact and how do you balance those two considerations. Yeah, and so just a double, and this was an interesting one. Sophie Janaski, his predecessor, ran one of these last year on Data for Impact 101, and that had 90 applicants for 25 spots. And so it really is where to kind of geeks from across campus when they're in flow get together and just stick on an idea that they're not getting credit for. It's just all where am I intrinsically motivated to learn more about something and I'm going to spend every extra hour in it. So how can Ben attract people into that, that type of activity? Yeah, thanks, Stu. And we're, we're also going to, to put a lot of these ideas into practice um, and we're, by testing a, an environmental funder founder community a network that brings together entrepreneurs and innovators with new ideas with the kind of folks who can support those ideas either through funding or through their, their talent and support. Uh, and so we're still in the process of building that. If you are an entrepreneur innovator, if you want to support entrepreneurs and innovators, uh, reach out to me as we put that network together. Uh, so one way that for a long time, CBA has been supporting environmental innovators and entrepreneurs is our pipeline of grants and prizes. Uh, we started a couple of years ago a brand new one called the Climate Innovation Seed Grants at the very beginning of the pipeline. Uh, those happened in early October. There's up to five grants awarded for ideas that address climate change from the nonprofit or for-profit perspective or even kind of freestanding projects. Those are in the range of $500 to $3,000. Then in November, we've got the Savatka Seed Stage Venture Grant. Venture grants. Those are for for-profit ventures that have environmental benefits. Those are two grants of $10,000. And then we have our Save and Sustainable Venture Prize in the spring, which is one winner of $25,000, also for a, a, a venture broadly with environmental benefits in the for-profit space. Uh, the winner last year, as you can see pictured, was Green Gear Supply Company that's working on introducing bio-based plastic as an alternative to bio fossil fuel-based plastics. And they have uh, their first product, a uh, bioplastic based rain poncho. I actually have one hanging up at my cubicle in the city. Um, but there's been a long history of ventures that have kind of come out of this pipeline uh, and lots of touch points for, um, for alumni like yourselves to all be involved. Uh, so as an example of some of those, um, those ventures that have come out of this, Fluid Screen is kind of innovating in the biomedical space. They just received are working on a, an early seed stage funding renewal mill, uh, got $2.5 million of seed stage funding, and Sylvia Terra is work, uh, doing forest inventory uh, with new technologies, kind of big data or remote sensing. They have a partnership with Microsoft and they're working to map all of the trees in North America. Uh, and we're also starting something new this year, as Lauren mentioned, a pitch competition uh, for recent alumni and current students who have ventures. This will be happening concurrently with some of our pipeline at the Yale Environmental Sustainability Summit. So if you're planning to come to that, um, you'll be able to see some of these ventures get up and pitch. And you'll also be able to, to choose who actually wins that, that pitch competition. And that's going to be a very participatory experience. So in addition to our grants and prizes, in addition to the focus on financing innovation, we also have a whole set of things, not just for people who are starting ventures or have new ideas, but want to dip a toe in the water, want to dip more than a toe in the water, want to really explore and build skills in this area of entrepreneurship and innovation. So we have a skills for sustainable innovation workshop series where students learn things like responsible marketing from uh, Vincent Stanley, who uh, was the chief marketing officer and director of philosophy at Patagonia, or a speaker series bringing entrepreneurs to campus to share their stories and their journeys. We have a climate change solutions generator, another intensive structure where students come up with their own ideas to solve climate change from the very beginning. Sustainable entrepreneurship consultancy, where teams of students consult teams of student consultants uh, will work on pressing projects for their peers who are starting new ventures. Yale Open Lab, like I mentioned from our team, this photo here is a blockchain bootcamp, uh, teaching students blockchain skills with the aim of using those skills to solve environmental challenges. Uh, Sophie Janaski last, last year brought a tech and sustainability focus, and we do hope to, to continue that in some capacity and really build technical skills and think about how new technologies address environmental problems. 
And then our green light workshops are not officially part of this portfolio, but very much in the same mindset of how do we apply ideas of innovative thinking to solving environmental problems, not just for new ventures and entrepreneurs, but also existing companies and organizations and the kinds of problems that they're trying to solve. So as alumni, how can all of you get involved? There is a city mentor network and we're looking to add a lot of folks from our CBAY alumni network into, those, into that mentor network. So if you go to sci.city slash networks, you can do a quick form, it takes a couple minutes and you'll get plugged into that network and we will flag you as, as a CBAY alum as well. Or you can use that with the QR code there in the corner to find that form. Um, you can also connect to this funder founder community that's been formed less formally at this stage, but if it's something that you're interested in, either as an entrepreneur, as a potential funder or supporter, um, please do reach out about connecting to that and stay tuned for more information as that officially takes shape. You can give feedback to a startup venture. Uh, we, we've tried different processes during that um, grants and prizes pipeline to provide really hands-on and in-depth feedback to ventures about their progress, and we may reach out with more opportunities to do that. Come speak to students. If you're doing something cool, let us know. Uh, and if you're going to be on campus, we can arrange opportunities for you to, to speak to students during a lunch talk or some other format. You can even lead a workshop, which is a little bit more hands-on and involved, helping students to build skills. Follow our work. I'll be writing a lot about environmental innovation, uh, both things that are going on at Yale and things that are going on outside of Yale. So, so stay tuned with the CBA social media and other things going on in the email uh, for some of that uh, information and communication. And lastly, if you're interested in any of the above or anything that's not listed above that I haven't talked about, please send me an email. You have my email right there. Don't hesitate to reach out. Great. Um, my name is Heather Fitzgerald, Associate Director at the Center. I just wanted to spend a few minutes talking about our Alumni Visiting Experts Program. Um, we're coming up on our third year of this program and it's been uh, quite successful. Um, it's a way where we invite uh, alumni back to campus as a resource for students, a great way for alumni to get engaged and kind of give back. Each cohort of experts, uh, we can, it consists of about five to eight Yale alumni from various industries working on sustainable business practices. Um, after, uh, again, this is our third year, so after our first two uh, years of this program, we've connected uh, alumni with over 150 students. So that's meaningful engagements, one-on-one -on -one time with students and alum, uh, helping each other and kind of just giving advice and, and, and learning from each other. Um, these have facilitated some summer internship opportunities and even a few uh, job offers have come out of this. And we've sponsored several speaking engagements back on campus. Um, so in this program, the experts, we ask that they give about 10 to 14 hours of their time over the course of the academic year. And this can be in that sort of one-on-one -on -one, um, mentorship. It can be in those kind of group chats. It can be giving a talk on campus. And it can be um, helping to build CBase programming. I wanted to give a big thank you. This is our uh, second cohort. Uh, up on the screen here. Just wanted to give a, a big thank you to these folks. Um, they've spent a lot of time with our students and we've heard a lot of great, great feedback. The expertise represented here in this group was corporate sustainability, energy development, apparel, green banking, conservation finance, management consulting, and more. Um, the types of engagements included like Jeff Schaub and Suzette Cardi actually came to campus and hosted some on-campus group meetings, um, some over meals, which is very nice. Jeff Schaub is also contributing to um, the certificate program that Stuart was just talking about. Uh, Matt Thurston, we experimented with a couple different things. Matt Thurston hosted a webinar um, where he discussed his career journey, his current role, um, and how his time at Yale prepared him for his work, and that was very well attended. I think we had over 50 plus uh, students uh, watching that webinar. And there were many, many, many one-on-one -on -one, uh, video meetings, virtual meetings, because a lot of this is done virtually. Um, again, the feedback has been great. Students were delighted to have this direct access to leaders in their field of interest. Um, and on top of expert advice and insights, uh, again, some internship and job interviews came out of these engagements, so really quite successful. Um, the visiting experts, they had lots of great things to say about their experiences as well. Um, they were really happy to give back to our community. Uh, they were impressed with the quality of students that they met with. 
and they found the opportunity to be quote rewarding and energizing so so really great for both sides um, we're building our second or excuse me our third cohort i'm happy to announce um, it's i think we have five of the eight now and you can see them up on the screen there we're really excited to to bring them and see what happens with them this year um, and craig vita just emailed me this morning craig oh, if you're great. on thank you we're excited to have you on board as well that's great um so experience represented here at responsible investing apparel and sourcing food and commodities supply chains uh sustainable development goals and indigenous people's rights entrepreneurship and innovation and again more so we're really excited to see where this next cohort um, takes the students and and hear about positive experiences on both sides. So if you have any interest um, in becoming a future uh, visiting expert, you can certainly uh, email me, reach out to us. I just wanted to go over a couple of different ways um, on top of being a visiting expert that you can share your expertise. And we're always wanting to hear back from our alumni, bring your, bring your expertise back to campus. You can participate in one of our webinar series um, we have uh, one on renewable energy innovations and one on ecosystem services. So if you're doing something cool in those spaces, we'd love to hear from you and, and possibly set one of those up. Uh, you can be a resource for our digital publications and environmental finance. Um, where students are always looking for uh, sources or interesting stories that are happening, um, question and answer, they'd love to interview with you. Um, so just kind of be open for that. We'd love to hear from you if you're interested. Um, be a resource as we continue to build curriculum, as we were saying, you know, it took a lot of our alumni to help build a, uh, our first online certificate program. And so it's just incredibly beneficial to, to have that expertise come back um, into the CPA programming. Um, we also have uh, work building in sustainable finance and corporate water risk programs. Um, and you can participate in a speaker series. We have several happening this year. Um, one in climate change innovation, uh, of course, as Ben was talking about in entrepreneurship, personal career journeys, um, regenerative agriculture is a new one that's starting this year, and plant-based foods. Um, so if any of that you know, is in your wheelhouse and you want to share something, please reach out to us. And you can lead a workshop. You know, come just kind of we can be bespoke. You can let us know what it is you'd be willing to bring back to campus. So bring your bring your skill set back to us and help teach others. So email me with any of interest in any of that and um, love to hear from you. Um, so we're just going to close and kind of one of the things that people always ask uh, is kind of well how's the, how are things going at Yale? You know, what does it look like? What is the relationship between the two schools? You know, is the is the university really focused on this as a as a key area? Um, and is it continuing to grow and develop? Is it a strategic priority for, for the university? Um, and the best signal that we've had during um, the last, I mean, I, the best signal we've ever had um, <laughs> of how that is, is that the university recognized the person who personifies our approach, um, Brad Gentry. Um, for those of you who know Brad, Brad has been now at Yale for you know, 25 years. Um, and it approaches the work and the connections between the schools and then across campus with kind of generosity and the approach to him being interdisciplinary and building lots of constellations of stars from across campus. Um, and uh, this past year, at the behest of um, Indy Burke, Dean of the School of Forestry, and Ted Snyder, Dean of the School of Management, um, they put forward to the faculty of both that Brad be named the joint uh, professor uh, that sits between both schools. Um, so this is a position that had not been filled, a name position that had not been filled for a number of years. Uh, and it really is, I think, a wonderful signal of how investment in interdisciplinary connections and problem solving and applied learning um, is valued, that a deep focus on the student experience and how people can navigate this place and get the most out of it and then have an impact on the world uh, is seen. And just um, that the kind of approach of um, humility and generosity and a deep caring for building a network um, and expanding a network and seeing networks as a key lever for addressing a range of social and environmental issues is something that we should focus on. And so we're thrilled about this. Um, if you didn't see it, we just wanted to share it. Um, and if you have a moment, you know Brad, um, you know, we'd love to hear from you and, and have a note or something sent there.
So um, we've got um, time now uh, for some Q&A. Uh, and so you see the Q&A box that's there as a chat function. Um, if you have a question uh, for anything we've talked about here, anything we haven't talked about, uh, please throw them out. Uh, right now, we don't have any open questions, which, you know, maybe you don't know how the chat function works. Just go to the top. Go to the Q&A, write down anything, just say hello. We're, we're happy to answer um, anything that comes through. Uh, but um, yeah, um, let us know if there's anything that we did not clarify or something that you have heard about that you'd like a little bit more detail on to didn't cover. Right, or you can answer what is your favorite pizza in New Haven that you missed desperately. Mm -hmm. That would be really interesting. <laughs> yeah. uh. Todd, you didn't say anything. Do you, well, what do, you, do you have any thoughts to share, reflections from the past year or anything? Um, uh, it's been an incredibly busy uh, year. Um, I, I think many of you have probably been involved in some aspect or another, but we've been making this enormous progress on online outreach, uh, curriculum development with the certificate program. We've had this enormous focus on entrepreneurship and the connection with the city, an enormous focus on sustainable finance, um, uh, an enormous focus on pulling together kind of what we have the principle of, you know, the, the different degree programs that are coming out of the School of Management, the new degree programs um, or focus areas coming out of the School of Forestry, and the other schools where we're just starting to realize how much environmental sustainability is going on. Um, it's, it's kind of overwhelming. Um, to, to, to wrap your head around. Uh, I, I thought this was a really good kind of touch points on three aspects in particular. Um, but there is a whole world outside of this as well. So I really encourage everyone to, uh, to, to access the website and, and put themselves in the to learn what's going on. Oh, got a question, if we're ready. Um, Hello, Logan. How are you? So, Logan Haldiak uh, is asking, I'm curious how it's going with the career services offering, just helping students navigate their internships and job opportunities, especially in sustainable finance and impact investing. Um, it was very student-led when I was there. Um, at one point, I suggested doing some video interviews with students that other students could watch around different career paths and impact, for instance. There's a bunch of things. <laughs> I'm gonna let Stuart start because there's a career um, career pathways effort that's been kicked off. Yeah. So one thing that you can see, Logan, is um, uh, Heather has really led this um, with teams of students, but it's been a, a, a great contribution to where we can augment the resources at the career development offices. We have a pathways in um, corporate sustainability and a pathways in clean energy. Um, those are two documents that we put together um, over the course of kind of sprints with students that then serve as foundational guides that someone can look at to navigate a career in either space. And it has maps of kind of what the careers look like, resources on campus, and um, kind of profiles of students that people can envision and see, oh, this is what I would look like or potentially could look like in a career right after it. Um, so that uh, is certainly one where we're looking to build on that and in the coming year the two that we're um, focused on are one in uh, sustainable food, uh, sustainable agriculture and food systems and then uh, one in impact investing and sustainable finance. And so making sure that those resources are there um, uh, for folks and then um, it really has been um, incredible to watch what the EMBA community with Todd's work has done on impact investing where there's an annual conference now that occurs in collaboration with and led by the, uh, the International Center for Finance um, and the MBA group, the um, MINT group, the MBA Impact Investing Network Training. Um, this is something where they get 100 or 75 or 100 applicants for 25 slots. Yale has won the national or international competition that worked in the last two years in this. And there's really increasing curriculum around impact investing as well. Uh, so you're seeing curriculum build up, student interest grow, and building in some of these career resources. And I think there's some ambition and hope that Yale can become a kind of the place you think of when you think of impact investing, uh, in particular on that one. So that's something that 
a lot of us are just scratching out and looking at it. And Todd has been leading a mapping effort of curriculum um, on some of this uh, as well to see what the gaps are. There's one other thing to add, which is interesting. Peter Boyd, many of you know Peter Boyd. Peter and I are going to pilot this uh, uh, effort in the executive MBA with the career development office over at SOM. Um, for the EMBAs, we're going to go through this. Um, some of you are familiar with the Designing Your Life uh, to Stanford course. We're going to take some of the tools out of that for people that are interested in, interested in pivoting to the executive MBA from current job to a new job when they graduate. So we're going to combine elements of the tools from that, plus Peter's pretty well established The Hunt, uh, which is once you decide what you want to do, how do you go out and get that career? Um, and then uh, we're going to pilot that in the executive MBA through a series of lunch sessions throughout the fall and into the spring um, and see if we can, uh, with the CBO, kind of help sustainability pivoters, not necessarily in finance, but a good third of the people that will be attending are, are interested in sustainable finance. So we'll see how that goes with a smaller group and then maybe we'll roll it out uh, or help Peter roll it out in, in future years to a larger group of, of students. Yeah. And one thing I'll, I'll add to all of that, I think I've seen just in the time that I was a student to being here now in a staff role, an expansion in the, in the resources and attention to a lot of the different career pathways at the intersection of business and environment. But one kind of unavoidable truth of these career pathways is that they're not always clear and obvious. So we do our best here to, to make those, those pathways clear to the extent that they can be. But a lot of it requires kind of a harder uphill battle on the, on the student side and one thing that can really help with that is kind of turning the tables back to, to all of you, uh, engaging with, with current students and, you know, students reach out looking for, looking to chat with someone about, about potential avenues or, you know, you can, if you come to campus and have ways of, of interacting with students, that is hugely helpful to model what these different pathways look, look like because there's not always, you know, something that, that is clear and, and easy to find. So uh, to some extent, you all are, are the examples that we point to. For what these pathways look like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, then, and this is also the reason why we, you know, Ben's um, bringing um, and we're hosting Emrita Kapoor, who represents kind of the impact investing perspective and this, uh, you know, venture philanthropy perspective. Having executive fellows or practitioners on campus who represent that is kind of a critical bridge as well. Um, uh, thanks for the question, Logan. Another one we just got in um, was uh, what resources can I find related to sustainable lifestyle if I wish to have a sustainable lifestyle startup, um, included environmental, social, and economic sustainability. Um, one, so we have a, um, a partnership with the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. Um, one resource that they have, which um, uh, a number of people have found very useful, is uh, called the Good Life 2.0 which is a, um, an approach and a kind of a, a comprehensive approach to mapping all the efforts that one would need to change um, related to um, lifestyle and approaches. Uh, what do you value? How do you value things? Um, kind of how do you make everything from purchasing to everyday decisions? Uh, the, um, the other one um, that uh, we would think about, and there's some interesting academic research um, you can look at um, from folks around here. Uh, George Newman and Tamar Makoff, they did a number of research projects with CBA on sustainable lifestyles, uh, which was uh, powerful. Um, uh, any others uh, that folks can think of? I was thinking if you're close, it's an anonymous question. Um, if you're close to campus and are interested, you should connect with the Green Line team because you could come and answer that question directly with students if you, if you want to run a workshop. Yeah. And the other one that I would just say on the trend that we've seen, um, really, uh, a really powerful one is the push toward plant-based food um, in and around campus. Uh, a number of students led initiatives last year, the intensives that Ben was mentioning at City and then speaker series, all on this kind of conversion to plant-based food. And it was part of our effort on climate change solutions and the climate change solutions generator. Um, Plant-based food in Paul Hawkins' drawdown framework, which is a really powerful one for addressing different elements of, of how do we solve climate change, has plant-based food and lifestyle in the, the upper end of the impact. Um, so that's one where I think we're seeing that really spike in interest and it's something where there's a lot of um, student alumni activity congregating around as well. And there's a number of talks and resources you can find on plant-based food on the, on the website.
And of course, there's a guide to a B Corps um, yep. online on the website, which is not specific to lifestyle, but it's very, very relevant. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, how as an entrepreneur would you set found a company based on um, principles that are um, you know, embedded in the corporate charter that go well beyond shareholder value? Uh, so that is certainly another one. If you're on the startup side, uh, you can look at and just Google, uh, you know, B Core Guide for Entrepreneurs, and you'll find it on the CBO website. And Vera, I see your note there about um, giving you the names of all the things that we just discussed. I'm happy to. Uh, as after we close down, uh, to send you, uh, send everybody all the attendees, um, kind of just that, that list of, of resources we just discussed. And Sarah Harari writes in, hi from Copenhagen. I miss you all. <laughs> I strongly approve of all your recent staff hires. But I mean, that is a, it, on a serious note, you know, it is really wonderful that we're able to bring in people as talented as Ben and Vero. Um, and Nate Springer and others from the alumni network to kind of continue to work and engage at the center. Um, that cluster of expertise and people that have been produced out of here and then being able to, to, to build and continue that relationship is something that we really see as a strategic advantage for the center. Mm -hmm. I just quickly, and we have one more question, but I wanted to give props. Uh, she's not on this because she couldn't be, she's interviewing, but I wanted to, to just say thank you to Holly McLaughlin, who uh, is an FES alum and just really has helped us um, the past six months kind of build out our um, kind of alumni relationship strategy. So really excited. And you, hopefully you guys got the alumni newsletter. Um, so if not, you know, uh, I can add you, but really thanks to her for, for helping. It's just great to see how she can give back. Um, is this a good one for Ben? Yeah, yeah. so I'm seeing a question from uh, Nisha Desai. Do you have any resources to help non-recent alums who are working on startups in energy and sustainability? I'm class of 92, working on a startup, and would love to see what I can leverage from Yale and also give back. I think this plugs very much into what I was talking about, about kind of actively taking these, these lessons about networks and, and finance and, and providing resources and applying that to some of the folks who are in our CBAY and, and now more recent city network. Uh, and so in the approach that, I, that I'm taking this year to, to kind of entrepreneurial activities, I, I would like to open the door much more to alumni, to folks where we're starting businesses because, you know, it's a great opportunity while you're here at Yale to start a business and then you can kind of learn things in class, apply that directly, have a flexible schedule. But there's also plenty of benefits to starting things at various other points in your careers. And there's a lot of research on the benefits of, of going into entrepreneurship once you've already worked in a space and in an area. Uh, for some time. Um, so I, you know, anyone who's working on that niche or, or otherwise, I think that that's, you know, there's, there's precedent and just a lot of benefits to that pathway. I'm happy to open my door to talk in more depth with anybody uh, about potentially finding resources. And I think other, uh, other folks at, at CBay and, and City uh, would do the same. Um, so happy to, to chat more about that. A lot of the, the kind of direct funding resources are limited kind of for, for practical reasons to folks who are currently students on campus but in terms of the mentorship and, and connections those are things that continue long after after folks have graduated so i would love to as i'm building this this networking community include folks wherever they are in their career in their entrepreneurial journey and and allow that that mentorship and learning to work both ways like from you know, outside and outside in yeah, and a couple of the resources. I mean, you could sign up for the Clean Energy Finance Forum newsletter, uh, which goes out on a fortnightly basis um, and to around um, within the different social media platforms and email uh, list that Heather uh, manages to somewhere around 12,000 folks. Um, and so always a lot of, we and Matt, we try to be three years ahead of the New York Times, The Economist, um, or any financial times. You know, we follow ideas, not clicks. Uh, so it's really something where we, trust the kind of engagement of students and we work with a professional editor to produce things that we think are um, unique in terms of content and then there's a whole host of other resources um, in that newsletter. The other thing that we've seen is, you know, we have a range of alumni in this financing and deploying clean energy cohort. Uh, so people in early stage startups, people in policy roles, uh, people who are, um, you know, working at uh, Fortune 5 companies um, who are in, like, the middle of their energy practice. So we've got um, a range of alums uh, who are in that as well who have, you know, focused on elements of energy or finance and are now taking this course to kind of round that out and really find new approaches and pathways. So um, a lot there to pull from uh, and take advantage of. Any other things, Heather, that you 
I think you've covered quite a few. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to say, Seth Curdy, if you're still on the line, I saw that you said thank you for all that we do, but I want to say thank you for um, giving your time back to the students. It's great to have you here. Um, we got so much out of it, so thank you. Yep. So if there's any other questions, um, feel free to type them in now. Otherwise, we're at 126. Um, so give you four minutes back to your day. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's really great for us to be able to hear from you and, and hear what you'd like us to take on and answer your questions. Uh, the uh, recording of this webinar and the uh, slides will be uh, posted to the website, the event website, um, and I can, like I said, I can email everybody that attended kind of a list of resources that we talked about earlier. So. Yeah. No, I mean, just thanks. It's really like a real deep expression of gratitude for so all, and as we kind of look across all this, everything we mentioned has an alumni element of it being built or set up or um, kind of and why it's successful. And so that's something that we view as critical and foundational for any program or activity that we put together. So the more engagement that we have with the expertise of all of the, the professionals out there and wonderful creative alumni who are making um, an impact on the world, it's going to make um, uh, our work better and we hope we can then feed that back in useful and, uh, and helpful ways to everyone who's in the alumni community. So, Thanks again uh, for all that, that you contribute back to Yale, uh, to the center, and really look forward to another year of building and deepening those relationships. Pretty well said. Thanks all. Thanks, Thanks everyone. everyone.